Hello and welcome to the home of the Ghost Owl. In the Warhammer the Old World, we're now looking at the Dwarven Mountain Holds faction focus and covering a look at the melee infantry and a comparison of the units, their stats and their points. So let's take a look and uh, familiar table for those that have looked at the one we did for the characters, but I think we'll get more from this one. So infantry we've got on here is the dwarf warriors, the longbeards, the hammerers, the iron breakers, the miners and the troll slayers and giant slayers. So you can see here that um, the stats between them are actually quite, uh, quite similar in the weapon skill. I would have expected the hammerers to maybe have a bit more weapon skill or the dwarf warriors to have a bit less weapon skill you know you've only got a difference of of one weapon skill between those ultra elite units and the most basic of the infantry so as i said in the character one it does feel like there's a bit of a stat squish um compared to seeing sort of previous stat lines um almost a bit playing it safe and making them in certain cases feel a bit samey and having to rely on the special rules to separate them. Uh, but when we look at strength, you'll see a number in brackets. That represents the, when they take their great weapons, uh, for those that can. So the one that sticks out there is Iron Breakers that can't take uh, great weapons, but they still have a strength of four, which puts them above the Miners, Troll Slayers, and Dwarf Warriors. So um, the Iron Breakers, I haven't actually you know, given it a colour. It kind of, it's not the worst, um, but it, but it can't get up to that that six and you know great weapons um, uh, as we've said before is you know that the always strikes last is not a huge deal for the dwarves who have such low initiative so um, I think the interesting one is the hammerers because they get their strength of six but they um, don't have the always strikes last because of the way their great hammers work everyone's tough as four everyone's got one wound. Um, so no surprises there. In terms of um, initiative, uh, the hammerers stick out. They've got initiative three along with the giant slayers. So when you look at the hammerers, I really, you know, in terms of the hammerers as, a, as an, an output unit, and that's what, it, that's what it really stands out as, an output unit, the hammerers are, 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 are pretty good. You know, the only thing that's really competing with the hammerers in terms of output is the giant slayers. Right, but the giant slayers are pretty expensive, right? They sit at number one. I mean, hammerers are not cheap, but the giant slayers, again, you know, they sit at number one in high in points, high output because they can get to three attacks with that additional hand weapon. If they're going for a great weapon, it's two attacks, though they get to the strength six. And that's the thing. So you've got two attacks at strength six. Compare that to the hammerers, you've got okay, one attack at strength six, but if the hammerers get charged, they go to two attacks at strength six. The difference is the hammerers have got a five plus save and a four plus against shooting if they take the shields, whereas the giant slayers have got no save at all. And for one point difference in leadership, bearing in mind the hammerers have probably got a king or a thane in there, um, I still question the, the, the value of the slayers. Um, but the hammerers there, you can see in terms of output, you kind of, I think you're kind of getting a bit of, the the best bits of the of the um of the of the giant slayers but but with armor uh and, and so the only thing is that is that one attack right um but and and being a little bit cheaper right and if you compare that to troll slayers well you've you've got better weapon skill better strength um better initiative and better armor so again against tro against the normal troll slayers um you know I still still prefer the hammerers. Um, in terms of the long beards versus the hammerers, again, you know, you can see that the long beards and the hammerers are pretty close. Um, the long beards do have that little bit more durability, and they're significantly cheaper than the hammerers. So the long beards, you know, if you're looking for something that's a bit like the hammerers, give the long beards great weapons, but they will be striking last, guaranteed. And I think that's going to be the thing. Um, uh, but you know they are they are cheaper on the points. So the long beards offer that kind of alternate option, if you like, um, but with the downsides that come with that reduced points cost. Iron breakers, as I said, I really like these guys. Um, they're not lighting any fires in terms of output. You can see that they've got the good weapon skill, but strength is pretty basic. Um, you know, initiative is still two. They've only got one attack, 
But the durability, I mean, three plus save, six plus plus against non-magical. Um, yeah, they are third most expensive, so they're not the most expensive out there, but they're just like a, a rock, and you add the special rules to them as well. They, they're they just a solid unit. I really like having a unit of Iron Breakers. It just, you know, gives gives the enemy something to sort of crash upon and, and, and kind of these things just sit there. Um, so, and you can see that when you're looking at the Dwarf Warriors here, um, you know, they are the, the cheapest on the list here. Um, but they, uh, you know, they don't really offer a huge amount. And when you consider that you've got Quarrelers, which can pretty much do everything that the Dwarf Warrior can other than a shield wall, um, and they've got crossbows, you can see why the Dwarf Warriors kind of, you know, they just kind of always fall out of the uh, of the of the option here, and Coral is only one point per model more expensive. Um, the miners, again, you know, it, if you look at this, they're not great. When you look at what you've got here, yes, they've got their great weapons, which it gives them the strength five, which is which is reasonable. Um, you know, they got the five plus save, but across the board, again, one attack initiative two. You know, and and then to de you know deploy them in ambush, the chance of bringing them on. But when you bring them on, how much support they're going to get? given what they can do here, and they're not the most durable, but not the most output either. Um, I don't really see that there's much value in the miners. So that, that's why you can see that, you know, if you look at long beards, hammers, and iron breakers, those are my go-to in terms of my melee infantry. And for my core melee infantry, you obviously can get the long beards for that, or you can use quarrelers. And if you think dwarf warrior, quarreler is dwarf warrior with a crossbow, pretty much. So... Um, you, I think for me, when you look at the comparison here, you can you can clearly see why you default to those units. Um, you know, a long beard is the same same points cost as a miner, right? Per model, same points cost as a troll slayer. And I think I'd rather have the uh, you know, and you get the extra weapon skill there. You've got the extra strength there. Um, you know, same initiative, same attacks. You know, better save. Yeah, same points for model. So yeah, I you know, long beards for me, definitely. Um, over over miners and troll slayers. So there you go. Uh, an interesting look, I think, at the melee infantry. Um, it kind of sticks out where the um and this is just stats, right? We haven't, you know, that you've got to take into account, yes, there are special abilities, but dwarf warriors, it's basic shield wall, you know, hammerers in terms of the, the damage output, iron breakers, we know they're the anvil unit, long beards, kind of the veterans. Uh, the long beards, you know, giving that buff as well to nearby units, which is really good. Miners is the ambush one. Uh, so, you know, coming on the board uh, has limited value. Troll slayers and giant slayers is, is you know, the, the killing blow um, and, and the death blow. But for me, again, it's their, their points cost with no armor. I just don't like having slow moving units that have no armor at all, no save at all means you've got to try and take a large enough unit to survive um so there you go that's my thoughts on the uh on the infantry let me know if you found this useful um we're going to go into the missile infantry next um but there we won't be just looking at the stats we're going to be picking up and looking at the weapons that go with their stats as well so again hopefully you'll find this useful to go in a deep dive it's nice to see the numbers um, and see kind of how the units stack up against each other. Uh, for me, I, I feel like G GW's played it a bit safe uh, and squished the stats and there's no real outliers in there. You know, they're totally reliant upon unit special rules to separate um, what they can and can't do, which kind of feels a bit safe. But there we go. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And if you want to see more content, hit that subscribe button. It's free for you to do. It takes a few seconds for you to do. And it's a massive, massive deal for me. So thank you for that in advance. And thank you to all those that have subscribed already. You've been watching The Ghost Owl. Tune back in as we start to look at a missile infantry comparison.